Uh, hey, Chris Carpenter here. A um, lot of questions about my aluminum printer bot, and um, I've even printed out huge emails to people, um, and I thought it would make maybe a bit more sense instead of sending an email to everybody to go ahead and make the video. So, um, okay, so let's go through here. Um, first thing you got to know about all the files. Um, the files have some hidden dots. Um, I use I use Lazy Cam. Um, I don't like Lazy Cam. It does things wrong, and so I end up doing a lot of things manually in Inkscape, so that um, I don't have to do it in Lazy Cam. And so, and this is one of them. Anywhere, anywhere there's a hole. Um, it, uh, it's just going to be a tiny single pixel dot on the file. It's actually a circle with a radius of 0 0.001, thousandth of an inch radius, um, which is how um, Lazy Cam seems to like these single holes. They, um, the layer, okay, uh, I should even start before that. Everything, all the files are, um, are all already offset. I don't like Lazy Cam's offset system so I offset them manually so all the files are offset for an 8 inch bit 0.125 inch bit and so in theory <clears throat> yes you put that file into your Mach 3 or whatever you're using with an 8 inch bit and if it cuts on the lines it's the right size period keep it uh, keep close attention to my layers the layers are all labeled and um, if it's labeled something like drill it doesn't actually mean a drill unless you want to use a drill. It just means that it's an eighth inch hole. Do, 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 do. A dado is a carpenter's term for a slot. Um, take all of the measurements in the in the labels uh, with a grain of salt. Um, many of those are specific to my materials. So if you get aluminum that's 0.125 and the aluminum I use was 0.12, you know, stuff like that. So use some common sense. Um, with what I've named the layers. The, um, the other thing with the layers is if you find layers that are enabled, uh, labeled <clears throat> first, second, third, or one, two, three, that usually means that I'm manually doing a pocket, which means I'm gonna do, here, here's a perfect example. Um, that will probably have two or three layers in it called one, two, three, and one would be the center hole, and then two would be a little bigger, and then three would be the final size here so that whole hole that whole hole is uh, is pocketed out um, another thing here these little holdies for the um, extruder those are pocketed where you'll see a line and then a rectangle around it and then a rectangle around that and these layers will be labeled one two three first second third the the last cut will be labeled uh, last cut full or last cut through um, or sometimes it'll be like one, two, five plus that basically tells me that it's going to be a, a through cut, which will be the thickness of the material plus however far you want to cut into your sacrificial piece. Um, nothing is tabbed. Nothing is tabbed. I hate tabs. What I actually do is I measure the thickness of my material really carefully, a lot of different places. And then in essence, I cut through the material a little shy, a few thousandths shy, and I just leave a little bitty edge all the way around my pieces. I find I found that's a lot easier to deal with um, when I do final edge cleanup than it is to cut tabs off. So if you want tabs, add your own tabs. Just saying. Um, okay, what else do I got here? Um, box tube. There's a layer called establish origin and delete. That and I believe it's probably in red, um, that origin is four by, uh, four by 15. So four by 15. And it's the actual size of this box tube. So after you get the box tube parallel with your Z, sorry, with your X axis, okay? So it's parallel with X. I did it with a dial indicator. Um, Oh, your origin's going to be over here. Okay, so here's your bit, all right? You're going to want to tap. So beep, there's your tap. And then raise, and then move over 0.0625, so half an eighth. 
okay, and that'll put the center of the bit right on this edge, okay, and then come over here, and this end cap won't be here, and you're going to go tap, and tap to the end of the piece, and then move over 0.065, and then um, zero your X and Y at that half a diameter bit over, and that will establish your origin with the center of the bit right on the corner of the box tube, and that's where you need to be. I personally put a little piece of angle iron on the table of the CNC, so when I flipped the box tube to mill the underside, I didn't have to reestablish my parallel. I could just butt it up against that aluminum, and that worked really well. Um, okay. Um, perfectly parallel. Um, flipping it. Extruder. This extruder mount is a two by two by three sixteenths angle. It's it's just a scrap I happen to have. But in the file for the extruder mount, you'll see there's like a bottom cut and there's like a top cut. And that is one cut is to notch out for the extruder and one notch one is to cut this. And I ended up putting the angle iron in a little uh, drill press vise little drill press vise like this guy and clamp that to my uh, CNC and then I was able to mill the top and then flip it and then all I had to do was align the bit with the cut from the first side and I could finish the the cut so two by two by three sixteenths cut in two pieces and you're gonna have to uh, import the file into like lazy cam or whatever you're doing eliminate half of the cut, cut one half, flip your material, reopen the file, and eliminate the first half, leaving the other half. It'll all make sense when you see it in the file. So that's that. Um, full materials list. 12, I think this list is on the Thingiverse thing, but 12 by 24 by 8 sheet, uh, 4 by... 12 by half inch bar stock that's like four inch by a 12 inch wide and that's this half inch stock here and half inch here that was a ebay scrap uh four by one by eight box tube um i got a 24 inch piece and it's 15 inches when it's done i ended up having to get that in 60 63 which i wasn't happy with um quarter inch bar stock just for doing these little hold downs if you want them or anything else um it's just hardware store i just got that at a hardware store aluminum that was just you know scrap whatever um everything else okay rods mcmaster car 12 uh 12 millimeter rod holders from ebay there's four of those um the sprockets the sprockets are McMaster car as well. It's the smallest one they make with a five millimeter shaft. I think they're ten tooth, and they weren't five millimeter. I had to drill them out. Um, they came in as four and a half. I don't think there's anything doing about it. Um, Six oh eight bearings for the idler there for X, and then there's two for Z. Those are just roller skate bearings. I think they're six oh eights. It's the, whatever the cheapest bearing you can buy is. Uh, Z couplers, buy them or print them, it's up to you. Threaded rod, ain't nothing special about that. Um, the Arduino hanging down here, this is an Arduino Mega 1280 with a Ramps 1.2, but the bolt pattern is not going to change for any Arduino or Shield, so in theory anything should, um, anything should fit there and hang out under there. Um, steppers were 78 ounce inch steppers. I bought a pack of four. Um, <clears throat> everything is offset, eighth inch bit. I personally cut at uh, about 15 inches a minute with a, a hundredth of an inch DOC, so 0 0.01 on the depth. And I found that I can cut, we should probably talk over here. Sorry, this is what this is what getting ready for Maker Fair looks like. Okay, so this is my rig. 
Uh, it's a Porter Cable 690. I made a little clamp for it. Uh, eighth inch bit, nothing special. Here's my table. Again, nothing special, just an aluminum. Just, just an XYZ CNC. There's nothing special there. The big thing here is I use, um, I use this guy here. Over. That's a cool mist system. And it's a mist system. It's got the little sprayer there, and then there's a bucket of coolant, and the hoses go in, and there's an air supply, and then air, su <laughs> air supply. Uh, cool mist lube. You mix this with water. Um, this lube, this uh, mist cooling, has doubled or tripled my cutting speed, and I can just fly without clogging bits. So uh, this is 100 bucks. I highly, highly recommend it. But all in all, it's just a 690 Porter cable router, and I just use 8-inch carbide bits. I buy them in a 5-pack, um, 35 or 40 bucks. Um, for the love of God, take everything with a grain of salt. If I've specified a specific number, depth of cut in the layers, make sure it makes sense to you and your particular thickness of material. Da, 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 da. And this is another note that I've sent to people. Um, this, I really dislike working off of other people's designs. Uh, like this printer bot is a printer bot. I mean, I copied the printer bot almost exactly, but I ended up, I mean, I drew every single line. I mean, I... I held parts up to parts, and I had this, I actually ran a lot of this um, through the laser cutter um, as cardboard before I even did the aluminum, and I'm going to give the same advice to you. Um, it would be incredibly wise for you to go down to um, Home Depot, no, actually don't go to Home Depot, go to your locally owned and operated hardware store, Lumberyard, and buy, um, buy a piece of 8th inch masonite. Um, this is, this is masonite. Um, you know what this is. It's pegboard without the holes. This happens to be, um, whiteboard. It's, um, you can get this. They actually sell this as shower enclosure material. It's used in like rental property stuff. Um, but there's, you know, you can get this really, really cheap and it's eighth inch. So it's about the right size. And for a $10 sheet of that, um, it's a pretty damn good insurance policy on all of your aluminum. Um, if you want to grab that masonite and basically just cut everything out of masonite, um, number one, the cut is going to be incredibly fast because you're just cutting through masonite. So it's, um, I mean, you're going to do it in like two passes and you're going to even cut it, you know, 30 inches a minute or something. You can cut as fast as you want. And like, it's a $10 investment. So, um, you're going to drop like 90 bucks on aluminum and spend an extra 10 on a piece of masonite and even god forbid you go to home depot you can get the little two foot by two foot squares of this stuff from home d for pretty cheap and it just seems like it's an incredibly incredibly logical smart insurance policy for all your very expensive aluminum because you have no idea what's in my head and my designs are based on the way i think and the way I solve problems, and that's not generally the way that a lot of other people do. So, if make sure you know what you're cutting, and running this as a test cut in masonite would be a very wise thing. Okay, I've said enough. Um, all right, things that aren't designed. Um, this little Z was added after the fact and drilled after the fact. I cut this little diamond shape thing. And it has a couple slots in it for this tab to slide up and down. And that's my final Z adjustment. Um, yeah, I mean, if you want to design something like that out of aluminum, you certainly could. I did it out of Plexi because I own a laser cutter. Um, these are two 15 millimeters stacked up because that's all I had. So that's a 30 millimeter standoff. Um, these bolts are damn close to the um, LM12UU bearing in there. They actually touch it. If I had this over to do over again, I might want to lower those a little bit. These side pieces, I believe that the original ones that, w that didn't work are still in the file called Bridge. Don't use those. Use these that are in their own file. They're taller. Um, 
that may or may not be fixed at the time you're seeing this. Um, heated table. My, I, I've, a lot of people ask me what I was talking about with the 10 ohms. You, you have to use Ohm's law. Um, ohm's, ohm's law is um, just Ohm's law calculator. You can, you can put it, you can find it online. Uh, just Google it, and it basically it's it's um, resistance and voltage, and you get um, current draw. So if you know resistance, it's like a triangle. If you know two of the three things, you can figure out the other one. So in our case, we know voltage at either 12, or in my case, I'm using 30 volts because my resistance was so high. Um, but let's say you're running 12 volts, okay? And um, then you know the resistance. In my case, it was 10 ohms, which is way too high. I think the red heater is somewhere in the neighborhood of 2 ohms or so. As a point of reference, the heater in your extruder is between 4 and 6 ohms. And then you can, um, you can basically do some math on the voltage and the amps, or the voltage on the resistance, and it'll give you amps, um, how, many, how much current is going to be drawn. And then um, amps and watts are just a conversion. You can, you can convert to watts, and then you'll know... You know, if you're in the 80, 90, 100 watt range, that's probably about where you kind of want to be for your heated table. So, um, I couldn't do any math on this table because I bought cheap eBay circuit board, and I had no idea of the thickness of the copper on the circuit board. So, therefore, I had no idea how to calculate my trace width. If you buy good copper board and you know the thickness of the copper, you can go uh, Google uh, PCB trace width calculator and it will take the thickness of the copper and it'll calculate how wide a trace at how long how far it zigzags back and forth will give you a given uh, resistance and then at that point you just need to calculate um, I mean if you go down to say uh, an ohm um, you you are going to be suck well actually I think the math works out one to one if you're running one ohm at 12 volts, I think that's 12 amps, um, which is a lot more than your little computer power supply can handle. Um, so just do, do the math and ask a nerd if you need to. Okay. Uh, these legs are not included in the files. Make something prettier than mine. I would suggest using these end caps and extending them and making legs out of these end caps and make them pretty. This is aluminum box I got at a surplus store. You need to make a better case than mine that's cooler. This is a blue Smurf from a company called Spark Fun. They they work pretty much out of the box. Um, what was this? I think that's it. Um, yeah. Okay. Eighteen minutes. That should be plenty. Um, okay. Um, I hope I hope that helps. I hope that gets you going. Any other questions? Uh, I am Chris. Uh, it's Rocket Brand at gmail.com not rock band but rocket brand at gmail.com you can find me uh, rocket brand googleable you'll find my website and find me um, so there you go hope it helps shoot any questions to me and uh, we'll go from there okay Chris Carpenter rocketbrandstudios.com uh, okay ding bye